Hello, uh, welcome back to another episode for this Hona Carmen restoration. Um, first thing I noticed is that um, as I was drying off the reeds with my hair dryer after putting them through the ultrasonic, I noticed that the hair dryer's got Carmen. It's a Carmen hair dryer. So I think really good. It's really important to have the same brand. On your hair dryer as your accordion so this is a Hona Carmen Carmen hair dryer so make sure you match them up really important that um, just to have some kind of order anyway uh, moving on uh, what I've done is I've cleaned and dried off all of the reeds so they're hey, they're all looking quite nice one of these kind of zinc plates and um, all good now, before I go on to valving the reeds, I'm going to do one more important step. And this important step is very good to do th at this point. And I'm going to check the tip heights. So the tip height is the height of the tip of the metal reed above the reed plate. Now, if the tip of the reed is flush with the reed plate. That reed can what we call choke. So it just means it just won't play because the air can't get underneath it and cause it to start vibrating. So I'm gonna look at all of them, just check and see if any of them have got too low a tip height. And if they have, what I'm gonna do is get a very thin craft knife like this. And you can just get it underneath and I'm gonna go up to about three quarters of the way up and I'm just going to carefully and evenly straight just bend that reed up a little and then check it again. So I'm going to go through all of these reeds and just check that the reed height, tip height isn't too low so it's not choking in on the plate. And then the other thing I'm going to check is if the reed height is too high. So if the reed height is too high um, so what can happen is that say it's a two or three mil high is that it just require will require just a bit more oomph to get that reed to start sounding a bit more air to get it moving um because of that bigger gap so what i'm looking for is the same thickness of gap as the kind of thickness of the reed itself and so like this reed here it's a very thin reed it's less than a millimeter and you're looking for that same gap and again the craft knife is really useful just to pop it underneath and just see um almost like a measuring tool really now if that gap is too high then you have to have a little tool that will help you push it down again so what i normally use is I've got this little tool that I use for lots of different things. It's kind of like a very thin steel um, pokey thing. And what I will do is, is on the reed that I want to lower the tip height, is go to about halfway, maybe a bit beyond halfway, about three quarters of the way up towards the rivet. And then you have to push down evenly in the middle of the reed tongue so not at one side because you kind of bend it and distort it so push down in the middle and you have to physically bend that reed so you can't do it at the end because you'll break it and you won't be able to push down hard enough so if you go somewhere right in the middle to two thirds just over middle really and physically push it down until there's a bit of slight bending going on again you have to double check that uh, you know how far you've bent it always best to do a little bit and then check so what i'm going to do next is um go through and check all these reads for the tip heights so what i'll do i'll just uh i'll do a recording of it but i'll just speed it up because i just found out how you can speed stuff up on the uh the video recording so i just want to just get this set up
Right, okay, that's done. Didn't take that long. It's really important. And also, uh, it, from experience, I know what wrong tip heights can do to a... Oopsie, the playing of an accordion. So it's nice to, to try it, to get it as, as good as you can. And although this is just a quite an old, pretty simple accordion, um, it's really nice to think about how to get it sounding its absolute best. And by doing some careful work on the reeds and um, preparing them before you do anything else, uh, all adds up to the final sound and hopefully can get that as nice as possible. Okay, the next thing, obviously keep knocking the reeds. Next thing I'm gonna do is get more of my valves out. Well, not all of them, but I've got my valves. No, I've got, uh, for the treble side, eight different sizes here, uh, starting from tiny, tiny ones to really big ones. And they're kind of synthetic multi-layer valves. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to order them in size next to the reeds. So I'm just getting the, the right size for each reed, making sure it's not too short, not too wide, uh, not too long. Uh, so finding the most appropriate one, and then I will be trimming them once I've glued them on, but trying to get as close as I can to the right valve for each reed. And I've got all the reeds in pitch order, so it makes it easy when you're deciding when you've got to step up a size of a valve as the reeds get bigger. So I'm just gonna organize the my reeds and I'll sh with the valves and I'll show you what that looks like when I've got them all set up. Okay, so that's all done. I'll just take a little photograph and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've done the, the valves are ready. So the next thing I'm going to do is start to glue on the valves. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to turn on the wax because the wax takes a while to heat up to the right temperature. So I'm going to get that turned on as well uh, whilst I glue on the, the valves. So let's just get it turned on. Although I'm running out of plugs. on my little heater. Brilliant. So for the gluing, all I'm going to do is get my little pot, get the, get the glue, little brush thing, and very simply just going to put, imagine that I'm going to put a square of glue, so the height and the width equal so I'm using the same so the width of the valve I do the same amount and that's the, the le length of the glue to make a square of glue and try and keep that even so start with one side do all of the one sides and then I'm going to flick them over and do the second side right I'm going to get cracking
so that's all valved and the next step is really important I'm going to trim each valve from each valve so that the end of the valve is just about mill over the end of the reed slot and if I trim the end of the valve what I'm also going to do is trim one of the layers back the next layer by the same amount that I've trimmed the valve so I'm keeping the kind of ratio of the layers even if I can so I'm just going to go along and trim all the valves like this Okay, I'm just going to do a little film on the waxing in. So all the reeds have now been valved. I've got them in two banks, the higher tremolo tune ones and the standard tune ones, so I know which is which. I'm going to cover those ones up because I'm not going to put those in yet. I've got some tape on the reed block on the end so that any drips will be catched by the caught by that tape. Um, and I've marked which side is which on the reed block and I know that the last four reeds are going to go upside down and those are the four that I haven't got any valves on because they don't need any so I'm going to start the start the waxing in and let's see what it looks like so I've got my nice brush and let's see so I'm going to go around the edges of the first chamber push the reed nicely into place making sure it's central and then I'm going to go around the edge the reed go around the top go around that edge as well and the bottom Just put an extra bit on that one because a new right new reed's going to go right up. Get there. Get the next reed. Push it down into that little bit of wax. Puffed onto there. That's all nicely sealed. And then I'm going to just carry on around with the wax. So let's just crack on.
Okay, so there we are. Oh, she. That's that read block. I feel that's in. Now I've got the one that I haven't done yet, so I'm going to put that next to it, and I'll bring the camera in. You can see the uh, before, before and after. Let's just move this round and show you. Let me sec. So you can see the uh, completely curled up valves and the old wax and then we've got the the newly waxed in reed block. There we are. So what I'll do, I'll do the other side of that reed block exactly the same way, uh, wax them in and then that will be that done and I'll do the same thing then for these reeds which are the black notes on the treble side and so once I've got all these both of these reed blocks completely finished I'll show you what they what they look like there we are that's the end of this little video and so we just managed to get to the end of waxing in the first set of reeds thanks for watching this one